Shalom Mishpaka and welcome to Hebrew Bible Secrets with your host Rabbi Jeremy Beaton. We are reading today from the book of Acts starting at chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. 1. And Shaul was consenting to his death and at that time there was a great persecution against the congregation which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Yehuda and Shomeron, Samaria, except the emissaries. 2. And devout men carried Sephaniah Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. 3. As for Shaul, he was ravaging the congregation, entering into every Beth house, and dragging off men and women, putting them to prison. 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word. 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Shemera, Samaria, and preached Messiah to them. 6. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. 7. For demons, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with paralysis, and that were lame were healed. 8. And there was a great joy in that city. 9. But there was a certain man called Shimon, who formerly in the same city used sorcery and amaze the people of Shemira, Samaria, claiming to be someone great. 10. To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, And this man has the great power of Elohim. 11. And to him they had regard, because that of the long time he had amazed them with sorceries. 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of Elohim and the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. They were immersed, both men and women. 13. Then Shimon himself believed also. And when he was immersed, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. 14. Now when the emissaries which were at Jerusalem heard that Shemiro, Samaria, had received the word of Elohim. They sent to them Kepha and Yehuchanan, John. 15. Who, when they had arrived, petitioned for them that they might receive the Ruach HaKadash, set apart spirit. 16. For as yet she was fallen upon none of them, only they were immersed in the name of the Master, Yahushua. 17. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Ruach HaKadash, set apart spirit. 18. And when Shimon saw that through laying on of the emissary's hands, the Ruach set apart spirit was given, he offered them money. 19. Saying, Give me also this power, that on whomever I lay hands, he may receive the Ruach HaKadash, set apart spirit. 20. But Kepha said to him, Your money perish with you, because you have thought that the gift of Elohim may be purchased with money. 21. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of Elohim. 22. Repent therefore of this your wickedness, and petition to Elohim, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. 23. For I perceive that you are bitterly envious and in bondage to sin. 24. Then answered Shimon and said, Petition to the Master for me, that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. 25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of Yahweh, returned to Jerusalem, and preached the Basura in many villages of 
the Samaritans. 26. And the Malak, Yahweh, spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, go towards the south, to the way that goes down from Jerusalem to Azar, Gaza, which is the wilderness. 27. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Cush, Sudan, a high officer of the state, of the great authority under Kandake, queen of the Cushites, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to pay homage. 28. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Yeshiyahu, Isaiah the prophet. 29. Then the Ruach spirit said to Philip, Go near and join yourself to his chariot. 30. And Philip ran there to him and heard him read the prophet Yeshiyahu, Isaiah, and said, Do you understand what you read? 31. And he said, How can I, except someone should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. 32. The place of the scrolls which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. 33. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. 34. And the high officer answered Philip and said, I petition you, of whom does the prophet speak of? Of himself or of some other man? 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scrolls and preached to him, Yahushua. 36. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain Mayim water. And the high officer said, See, here is Mayim. What hinders me to be immersed? 37. And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Yahushua, the Messiah, is the son of Elohim. 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the Mayim, the water, both Philip and the high officer. And he immersed him. 39. And when they came up out of the Mayim, the water, the Ruach spirit of Yahweh took away Philip, that the high officer saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. 40. But Philip was found at Ashdod, Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So that now brings us to the end of chapter 8. So let's go back and have a look at some of the footnotes in chapter 8. So the first footnote we have here is, And Shaul, Shaul was consenting to his death. So consenting, so let's have a look at this. Giving a consent vote would mean he was a member of the Sanhedrin. And to be a member of the Sanhedrin, Pallas would have to have been married. We know he was married and had children that were taken away from him. He was not an ascetic or hermit as wrongly projected. Okay, so Pallas was part of the Sanhedrin and would have been married. Okay, let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So let's have a look at this, preaching the word. So the term, the word, is an idiomatic expression for preaching the Torah of Moses. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 16. For as yet, she was fallen upon none of them. Okay, so let's have a look at this. For as yet, she... So we have here, the set-apart spirit is... The feminine side of Yahweh. Okay, 
So sent by spirit, the Ruach HaKadash is the feminine side of Yahweh. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is a continuation. For was fallen upon none of them, only they were immersed in the name of the Master Yahshua. So let's have a look at this in the name of the Master. So we have here immersion was done in the name of the Rabbi. Okay, Rabbi Yahshua. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 22. Repent therefore of this your wickedness and petition to Elohim if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. So let's have a look at this be forgiven you. So many in churches are doing the same sin by selling the set-apart spirit or trying to sell her by making money out of it. Okay, so many churches are doing the same thing, trying to sell the set-apart spirit or trying to make money out of it or her. So let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 27. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Cush, Sudan, a high officer of the state. Let's have a look at this, high officer of the state. Okay, so we have the Aramaic word here is Mahimna, which can mean a eunuch or a trustworthy one. But the Hebrew, Cerise, Genesis thirty-seven thirty-six, more accurately from the Torah, means a high officer taking the wording from Potiphar back in the book of Genesis, which is our reference guide. So here, an officer is meant and not a eunuch. A eunuch was forbidden to enter the kingdom of Shamayim, heaven, as per Torah, Deuteronomy 23 and 1, unless he was born as such. The copy of scribe may have been confused to understand this. According to the context, we translate the word officer of state or high officer is much more correct since he was a chancellor or since he was chancellor of his kingdom and a very rich man, a Jew likely by birth and of brown skin tone. Note, a man who was born a eunuch could enter the kingdom of heaven as he did not mutilate his body deliberately. Okay, so let's have a look at Genesis 37, 36. So Genesis 37, 36, and it reads, Now the Midianites had sold him in Mitzrayim, Egypt, to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, and captain of the guard, okay, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. Okay, so let's also have a look at Deuteronomy 23 and 1. So Deuteronomy 23 and 1. He that has crushed testicles or has severed genitals shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Okay, so we have a footnote here for Yahweh. And it says, see footnote Leviticus 21, 20. So let's have a look at Leviticus 21, 20. And Leviticus 21.20 reads, Or hunchback, or a dwarf, or that has a spot in his eye, or has an eruption, a feverish rash, or crushed testicles. Or crushed testicle. So we have a footnote for crushed testicle. And it reads, These things occurring from self and not by accident. Because just as today, as in ancient times, people neutered themselves or did some deliberate personal injury 
to prove their faithfulness to their false deities. Even neutering of animals is forbidden, a common occurrence today. The modern definition of castration is vasectomy. These things such as vasectomy, removal of uterus and other such methods are prohibited as anti-Torah and against the Elohim of Israel. Okay. So let's go to the next footnote. which is in verse 32. The place of the scrolls which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. So let's have a look at this. So he was reading Isaiah chapter 53. That was scripture for all until the time the gospel was written and completed. The New Testament as people have it in their hands, was not compiled in a book form until the 4th century CE. Okay, so the New Testament was not compiled in a book form until the 4th century CE. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 37. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that you are sure the Messiah is the son of Elohim. So let's have a look at this son of Elohim. So this text does not exist in the earlier copies of these manuscripts. Okay. So let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the Mayim, the water, both Philip and the high officer, and he immersed him. So let's have a look at this, he immersed him. So ritual immersion like this was always with the body, fully dipped and complete. Israel did not have the sprinkling immersion that the nations are practicing today. Okay? So this, this immersion like this was always with the body fully dipped and complete. Okay. So that now brings us to the end of Acts chapter 8. So I thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the other side. This is Rabbi Jeremy Beaton saying thank you for watching and Shalom Shalom. Baruch Shiem Kivod Makuto Leolam will never be the name of his esteemed kingdom, forever and ever and ever. Amen.